Hello, God saints, and welcome to today's Bible moment with Pastor Fred. Today's Bible moment is, what is your focus? What is your focus? And we're going to be coming out of the book of Philippians in chapter 4. And let's look at verse 8 in particular. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about such things. What is our focus? What we want to do is get our minds right. We want to get not distracted by what is occurring, what is happening, about the trials, about all of the stuff that we see around us, but keep our focus where it needs to be, on Christ. To get our focus on our home, which is heaven, and not here. You know, if, we'll, if we get our minds right, we'll get our living right. So let's, let's look at what Paul is talking about. And Philippians is characterized as a very uh, positive book that uh, Paul had wrote. He, he had uh, rebuked a couple of individuals and hint that the church might not be as unified as it should be. But most of the book is a positive statement of what the church should do rather than rebuke of what they are failing to do or an exhortation to stop doing something. In chapter one, Paul speaks of his imprisonment, his assurance, that this will further the gospel and he encourages the church to live in a manner worthy of the gospel no matter what happens to him or them. In chapter two, he goes on to tells us that Christ is the ultimate example of one who puts the interests of others first. And the Philippians are encouraged to adopt the same attitude and mindset and live it out. And then in chapter three, Paul warns the church to avoid false teaching and false teachers who would attempt to add works to the grace of Christ and of sal for salvation, and then contrast those teachers with true believers who, like Paul, put no confidence in the flesh. And in this final chapter, in chapter four, Paul gives a list of things that he wants them to do. This kind of admonishment has been evident throughout the whole letter of, to the Philippians. He told them in verse 1 to stand firm in the Lord, to rejoice in the Lord always, to let your gentleness be evident to all, and do not be anxious about anything, but pray about everything. And then in verse 8, our key verse Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And he's encouraging them for this right living, and he tries to sum it up in this last chapter. And the point is not to compare and contrast the various categories of things that Paul is saying, but it's giving us an overall biblical uh, view and understanding of what the mind should be focused on. If it ain't right, it's got to go. I can't let negative thoughts, I can't let negative things take over the positive message of the Word of God. I can't let uh, pessimism and bad attitudes and bad mindsets and wrong living and uh, lies versus the truth come into my mind. He says, you got to let that go. You got to rejoice and you got to rejoice in the Lord and you got to pray always in everything. You got to get your mind right and that's gonna give you a biblical worldview. And once my mind is set on and focused on what is right, my body will follow. It will do those things. Our minds can't do what uh, we should be doing if it's not thinking about those things we should be thinking about. So thinking about whatever is true, admirable, right, pure, lovely, 
commendable, excellent, and whatever is praiseworthy applies to every area of life. And, but what we have now is we have a bombardment through media, through uh, you name it, online presence, uh, propaganda, people always bringing all of their views into our mindset and it's changing us and we got to turn that off and we got to turn God on. We got to put what is the right thing to do? What is it how I should handle these things according to God's word? How is it should I should look at this? How do I look at these problems that we're facing? I need to count it all joy. I need to take these problems as an opportunity that God is going to use that for my good. And then he is trying to mold me into something. I'm going to a, another level. I'm going to a bigger blessing. So I'm going to let these opportunities that I'm going to take out of the bad. You meant for evil, but God is mean, meaning it for good in my life. I need to just change my focus. Change your focus, my beloved. What is your focus? God bless you. God smile upon you. Happy Sunday.